I hear the voice of one cry I hear the voice of one cry Prepare ye Prepare ye The help we have about we can get the Lord served in the nursery how are we going to have revival we can't get these people to go over there and say, hey, I will help. I will help one week or one service out of the month. I will do whatever I can to help that lady, to help this ministry so God can start to move in new life of Rocky Mount. Yeah. That we can have an operating church to where God says, I will add to you and it will not overburden any week. It won't overburden any ministry. You're ready to step up and to move on to the next grade. You're ready to get up and move on. Because you got your bases covered. Oh, the... Come on, come on, keep it going. I don't like how I plan on it. <laughs> I really do. Uh, if people come to this church and they're here for three weeks, I want people to get involved. I don't care really what they got in their life. They say, oh, they may have sin in their life. We all do. That's right. We all deal with stuff. We are cleansed by the blood. Amen. I ain't telling them they're going to get up and preach or anything. But they can, they can, they can, they can change a diaper, can't they? Come on. Come on, guys. We don't... <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, if we really want revival, everybody wants to be in the sanctuary for the revival. Everybody wants to be in the presence of God. Very few people want to be back there serving. But the Lord says you got to serve if you want the presence. If you want the presence, if you want this, you got to go serve. You see, a lot of people want to eat, but they don't want to cook. They don't. They want to eat, but they don't want to have anything to do with the cooking of it. The preparation of the atmosphere. When you walk in, you say, I smell something in the house. I smell steak. <laughs> well, we can go and eat that steak. We can have a good time eating steak, you know, before the Lord. But who's going to be doing all the cooking? I want to receive and I'll put forth the effort. Amen. Come on now. Now, I'll I, I be the first. My wife will tell you the second. I'll be the first. I'm going to confess something here tonight. I don't do a whole lot of cooking in my home. I don't. And my wife asks me, why don't you cook? I say, well, I'm ruining a good thing. <laughs> she can cook. See, she can do it in about 10 minutes, what it takes me about an hour to do. She's in there whippity whip and you're done. But the thing of it is, if I would do it more often, it wouldn't take me as long. I don't feel like it's my gifting necessarily to cook, but I need to be cooking to help her out. We need to be serving in our church to help this church out. Not because we are few, because God's getting ready to add to our number. And He's going to add to us. And He's going to give us. He's going to bring in new faces into this place. I said He's going to bring them in. I see it coming in. I said I see it coming in. I see them coming in. I see families coming in. I see people wanting to invest in the kingdom of God in this place. I see it. I have it in my heart. I know in my knower that God's showing up in this place this year with people. I know it in my knower that God is moving in this place. And it's going to be people in this place. Yeah. And some people are going to be happy and some people aren't going to be so happy. Because whenever you got 130, it ain't the same as 60 or 70. Because somebody may know your middle name when it's 60 or 70. When you get 130, 140, 150, some people lose their influence. Come on, come on. Come on now. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, we have more people. See, some people like a little, little fishbowl because they have influence in a little fishbowl. But for us to have influence in something big, we've got to grow and allow that maturity to take place in us so that we can lead instead of just trying to be the center of it all. Okay. Amen. It's true. Amen. It's true. Amen. I tell you what, man, I, it's true. So here we are. We're getting ready to step over into something. Now, on Wednesday night, I'm here to let you know. I know. I know. It's not going to, it's going to be supernatural, natural. It's going to be a supernatural move of God, but we're going to do our part. 
See, when we as a church, we've got to stand up and say, okay, God, I want to do my part in that church right there so you can show up and you can manifest yourself and you can get all the glory. People can come and people, babies can come, people, children can come. Oh, they can be come. Let them come, Lord God. And we will take care of them, Father God. And we will love on them. Now, for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to have a sign-up sheet outside. And I'm not asking you to sign up because I'm saying something. I'm saying sign up because we need help. My, my wife needs to be with her husband some Wednesday nights. Some of them, she needs to be up in here. The lady of the house should be up in the sanctuary at least once. Yes. <laughs> at least once a month. Yes, more than that. So I'm not trying to badger you guys. I'm just saying we all need to do our part. We all need to do our part. Amen. Alright. We're going to do some teaching tonight. We're going to do some teaching tonight. And if y'all can't see it, move. <laughs> y'all can tell what kind of... Hey, come on, guys. Hey, you want it up on the stage? Y'all think I need it up on the stage? stage Alright, come on, guys. A couple guys up here. Help me out. You know, people don't want to get involved in certain areas because they say it ain't their gifting. The thing of it is, I didn't feel like really getting up in front of people was my gifting. I did it because God called me and kept working with me and kept on working with me. On, yes. Until I couldn't say no. I mean, I'd sit on the back row and I'd move up a little bit. But before long, I had to say yes to the Master. And it wasn't like that. Uh, I planned it all along. It was the Lord. So we need to be willing to get in there and do our part. And at least help out. Oh, Daddy's done got mad. Daddy's done got upset. I'm not really upset. I just know what's coming. I know what's coming, guys. I know what's coming. And if I knew, if you could see what's coming, you would say, let's get that up and running. Let's get that over there up and running. Yeah. So, you know, whenever people start showing up, we look like we got it together. Come on. They want to be a part of that. And then all of a sudden, instead of me being back in the nursery every three weeks, I ain't back there, but every eight weeks, once eight weeks, once every eight weeks, I'm back there. Or every once every ten weeks, I'm back there. When you start to have a bigger church and you start just doing your part, then it's just a once every once in a while, unless you love it. And if you love it, you're going to be heading something up. Because there's leaders and there's followers. There's some people that lead a certain thing. They want to lead. They want to lead. They want to head stuff up. They want to organize. And then there's some people that follow the leader. They don't want to organize. They just want to show up every once in a while. So if you love something, then lead something. Here at New Life, we have a spiritual, we have a spiritual aspect, and we have a business aspect. There's two different facets here in the ministry. We have a business aspect and we have a spiritual aspect. You know, oh man, whenever I was young in the Lord, I thought church was just about the Spirit of the Lord. And I still know that it is. He's behind it all, but there is a business aspect of running a church. That's why I get up here and people get up here and they take up offerings. And we're going to take up an offering tonight. We're going to receive an offering tonight just in a few minutes. But see, God shows up, but we have our responsibility to be good stewards over the business aspect of the church. Yes. Yeah. Right, yeah. Come on. It's true. That's right. Yeah, we don't want a lot of holes in our bucket because God could pour in the water and it would end up all over the floor. All of a sudden, it's all over the floor because you've got a lot of holes in the bucket. God doesn't want us to. He wants us to be good stewards. So under the spiritual aspect of the church, I have two assistant pastors. I have two of them. They're co-assistant pastors. They both carry the same mantle. They both help me. They are here to help me carry the vision of the church. The vision of the pastor for the church. <coughs> these two men. And one of them's Floyd over here, Pastor Floyd. And right here, Pastor Dwayne. Assistant pastor, assistant pastor. Both of them are assistant pastors. 
They are here to help me. God knows I need help. They are here to help me in the spiritual aspect of the ministry. Spiritual aspects are discipline and ethics and worship and things that do with the Word of God. So rightly dividing the Word of God. When there's an act here that somebody comes in and they start questioning doctrine, I turn to my assistant pastors and we get in a huddle. Because usually, I mean, I'll submit myself and they submit themselves and we get around and we start talking about it and we will come out and see what the Word says. That's why I need assistant pastor. A quart of three is not easily broken. Yeah, amen. Amen. A man can run a thousand, but two, ten thousand, what can a quart of three do? Yeah. You hear me, guys? There is, there is intelligence to having people that are co-pastors or assistant pastors with me in the ministry of God. I was one of them at one time. I sat under another pastor and helped him carry the vision for his church. You see, if you ever want your own sheep, you got to be willing to help somebody else with their sheep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, if you're saying I'm a shepherd, then show me you're a shepherd. Get in there and start shepherding and show me and help me. Because if you, you say, well, I'm a shepherd, but I don't like people. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Oh, I can't stand the people, but I love the Lord. I think I'm called to be in the ministry. <laughs> That's a good laugh back there, ain't it, brother? <laughs> Come on now. Oh, I don't like being around a crowd. I think I'm called to be in the ministry. But you, you want to have just a few. I, I know some people that have uh, house churches and they call to the ministry and they just got them and their husband or them and their wife and they got their little house church going on. I'm like, Lord Jesus, help me, Lord God. Help me to have a bigger vision than that right there. That I would want to bless a community. That I would want to bless the Lord God. I'd rather get with somebody else. I'd rather get out there and be with another pastor than just have a couple of people around me and help him with a larger flock. Yes, yes. Come on, I want, to, I want to spend my time and where the Lord looks at me it says, you did well, Tim. And you, you, you didn't go bury your talent. You did. And I gave you certain, a certain amount of giftings and you went out and you made something of it. You didn't hide it. Yes. You didn't sit on it. You went and used it. People that sit at home all the time, and a lot of times, I, I ain't going there. I'm just saying that, that sometimes that's burying your talent. So here we are. We have, two, we have two assistant pastors here. And I went over. They are Pastor Dwayne and Pastor Floyd. and Y'all know each other really well. If something were to happen to me, or when I'm going on vacation, or if I'm sick, or if i got to go out of town somewhere, I want to pick one of these guys to cover the altar, to cover the, the preaching or the teaching of the church while I'm gone. God forbid if something were to happen to me and I was to get sick or if I was over in the hospital or something, one of these guys would have to pick up the mantle until I got back. I want them to cooperate with one another and say the vision will go on until yeah. the pastor gets back in the house. Just because he's away doesn't mean that we ain't going to carry on business just like it's being carried on. I believe in the anointing on both of these guys right here to be able to do exactly that. It'd be silly for us to, to just leave things just up in the air. Wouldn't it? Come on. It's like, you know, saying, well, I'll write that will one day. One day I'll write that will. And I've known people who write, never write the will. <laughs> and go on to be with the Lord and everybody else is stuck with the mess. Amen. They're trying to deal with it because <laughs> nobody ever wrote down what was supposed to happen if something were to happen. Because, you know, and they lived for 20 more years and then there was a mess. I'm here to tell you, if I'm not here, one of my assistant pastors is going to pick up and they're going to move on. And if, I, and if it's just a scheduled visit, they're scheduled away time, I'll point them out and I'll say, hey, this week you got, you got it Sunday. God bless you. And the next week you got it, brother, Sunday. I believe in both of them. Amen. I believe in God in both of their lives. And uh, I, I bless them in the name of Jesus. Now that's the spiritual aspect. My worship leader, and he, he carries a mantle on him as well. Oh, I love Matt. Uh, Matt is my worship leader. And uh, when it comes to up here behind these microphones and everything, that man right there had, calls the shots. I've given him that authority. Do you hear me? Say yes and amen, Pastor. I hear you. He has the 
authority to make decisions as the worship pastor. And, but he's very submissive and he comes and chats with me and I chat with him. See, he's laid back, man. He likes laid back, you know. I'm like, man, step up, brother. Step right up in the front there, man, and start dancing. <laughs> because he's got a gift. But it's, you know, he's just like, oh, pastor, you know, I'd rather just be over there. I'm like, hmm, I see a lot in that man's life. Yeah. And I also see him moving from worship pastor to being a pastor one day. Amen. I think he's called the full-time ministry. Yes. Yes. Breaking the Word and feeding people in the Word. Yes. And maybe even preaching and then all of a sudden singing halfway through the ministry you know, of, of the Word, you see. I wish I could sing because there's times when i got a good preach going on and I wish I could have sung a song right there because it would have fit perfectly. <laughs> all of a sudden, man, you would have had a move of God up in the place because you can sing and teach. Oh, that's good stuff right there. <laughs> Amen. And my youth pastor, everybody knows this is BJ. Come on, guys, we've got a good youth pastor over here. Dwayne was the youth pastor, and I needed him in the sanctuary, and he needed to be in the sanctuary. That man can teach, yeah. preach, can't he? I mean, this last Sunday, we just, ah, man, that was good stuff. Yeah. Amen. I enjoyed it. So we have two aspects in the, in the church. We have a spiritual aspect and a business aspect. My business people here, the business end of it is my board. I have a board back there and I ask them to help me with my business decisions. I'm not asking them to do anything with my spiritual decisions. That's me and my pastors. I'm not asking them to lay out the vision for me or help me see the Scriptures more clearly. I'm not asking them for... You know, help me in the business end of it to help me to hear the voice of the Lord better. I'm not asking them for that. I'm asking them to help me with the business end of the church. Help me make good financial decisions in the church. My co-pastors, these, these uh, assistant pastors, not co-pastors, but assistant pastors, they help me to hear the voice of the Lord. You know, I feel like I hear the voice of the Lord, but they help me discern it even more. Hey, pastor, did you think of this? And I listen, and I mull over that, and I think about that, and I chew on that, and I'll come away, and I'll say one way or another, I'm going to hear the voice of the Lord. And then whenever I'm home with my wife, see, my wife, she overranks it all. Because whenever I'm home with my wife and we're praying or something, and she whispers the word of the Lord, I know it, I hear it very clearly from my wife. Yes. My wife is anointed. My wife has a sweet spirit about her. Yes, she does. And she yes. starts praying for people, yes. man. I tell you, man, it's good. So she has an anointing. So I'm telling you, we, we're honing in on the voice of the Lord around here. We need to do our part. And see, there's people in the in the uh, in the congregation, they they coming up, they're coming up, and they're gonna be in this thing, and they're gonna be in the assistant pastors and one day they'll be the senior pastor. But usually, if you're going to be a senior pastor, you've got to get in there and work some area of the church pretty good to where you're saying, I'm a worker. Because ministry is work. Yes. Yes. Ministry is work. You know, whenever we're doing this little, this little bit of whatever you want to call it right here, i got scars on my body. <laughs> Fell off a ladder and hit myself with a chisel and cut myself with a knife. <laughs> Poke myself with a wire. I saw a fly too the other week. Come on, on brother. Yeah. He got shocked a few times, you know, the electrician over there. Oh, you hear him scream. Oh! <laughs> it's working, brother. <laughs> it's working. You get a lot, yeah, you get a hold of a live wire. And some of you may think, hey, this right here, it's, you know, it's kind of boring or dry or whatever. We need to know this stuff. Yeah. Because I want people to know that they're making a good investment here. And what's going into the bank, I can account for every cent of it. I have paperwork. I have receipts. I have receipts for everything. I have receipts. Now, if I don't have a receipt, it's for a couple of pennies. I have receipts. And uh, that's the business end of it. See, the business end of it, whenever you're a church plant, <clears throat> for the first year of a church plant, you have a lot of liberty on how you run the church. Because you're just getting things up and running. Everything's just gelling together. People are coming together and they're just starting to gel together. And you're finding out what their giftings are and what their giftings aren't. 
So you as a pastor have to call the shots for everything. You have to take uh, accountability. You've got to do, you've got to be the painter. You've got to be the woodworker. You've got to be the visionary. You've got to do it all. And as the church gets up and running, the pastor needs to back away and let other people do a lot of that stuff right there. The pastor don't need to be involved in all that stuff. Other people should be in here painting. Other people should be in here staining. See, the pastor needs to start backing away. And you know what he needs to do? What did they do in Acts? He said this in Acts. They said, they said it's not right for us to be serving tables. It is for us to be dividing the Word of God. Yes. You pick out from among you people that you want to serve and serve tables and take care of these things. The apostles and us, we will be dividing the Word of God. That's what the labor is right there for the pastor. As we grow, you're going to find out I'm going to be backing up from a lot of other stuff. And I'm going to be devoting myself to hearing the voice of the Lord and to dividing the Word of God. So when people come in here, they're able to hear the Word of God. And I try to do that every Sunday. But the more as we get larger, I'm telling you, I'm going to back up. I'm going to let you know now I'm going to be backing up I'll have certain relationships that I'll kindle to and certain ones I can't because we will be growing. And I have to devote myself to a few good relationships and my God. My Amen. God. Yes. My God. i got to hear from my God. Do you hear what I'm saying, guys? I am determined before the Lord. And I know I've heard the Lord on this. We are growing this year. I'm letting you know before it happens. We are growing this year. It ain't, I ain't trying to hit it by dark. It's not something I'm throwing up against the wall just to see if it sticks. I'm letting you know I've heard the voice of the Lord. We are growing this year. Amen. We are growing. People are coming. Babies are coming. Got to have nursery workers. Children are coming. BJ may need some help back there, you know, with the youth. I'm going to need uh, ushers up in here. People are coming. And when we get bigger, we just can't come in here and just say, oh, it'll all work out. we got to be tight. And we got to be a cutting-edge church. We're going from one level to the next. One level to the next. You see, people say every level has got its devil. And I tell you what, we got to leave the struggles we've had on this level here. Because the other level is going to have a whole different struggle. I'm just here to let you know, I did not come to Rocky Mountain to stay at this level. I am not going to stay at this level. You hear me? Praise and the Lord. some people may leave because we're not staying at this level. We are moving up. And we're going to make a splash. And we're going to make an impact on this community. Amen. You know, we're not going to be small impact. Ah, yes. oh, Jesus, get on them, Lord God. And help them see what I see, Father. Yeah. I'm telling you, we are growing. Yeah. And the way you think, oh, Lord God, I've been tired already. <laughs> I'm just letting you know, we, we need help. I need help. I need help. How many of y'all are willing to help me? How many of y'all are willing to help me? You see, God wants us to be helpers. He wants us to be helpers. Not just... Uh, he wants us to be leaders. Yeah. I went to Frank the other day and I asked him to be a leader. And you know what he said? Oh, it's a privilege. Thank you for thinking of me. Thank you for thinking of me. It's a privilege. Not that... Uh, Oh no, you don't ask me to do another thing around here. He was in here to help me scrub up floor and put paint on the wall and oh him and I were a mess. That's the day I hit myself with the chisel. Now, I put the chisel down. I did. I put it down and got a screwdriver. You can't handle the tool you got, maybe sometime you need to lay it down. <laughs> I know y'all came to hear the word of the Lord tonight. And the word of the Lord is We are we are we're growing. Amen. The word of the Lord is tonight. We're growing. Amen. We're growing. We're growing. Let it grow. And there's going to be leaders coming. And there's going to be followers. Don't be bucking against the leaders that come. Because you weren't willing to get up and help me now. Come on. Because somebody's going to come and they're going to leave. Yeah. And other people are going to be in the queue because I've done it before myself. Well, who do they think they are? <coughs> oh, Lord God, it just burns me up that they just came in and they just ran ahead of me. And the Lord would get on me and He'd say, you had your chance. You had your chance until they had to come in and just pass you right on up. 
No, don't you hate it when somebody comes and just runs right past you? I'm letting you know there's leaders coming. Come on. And if we won't, uh, if we won't say yes, Lord, I'll do it. Then there's somebody else coming that will. Right. Uh, <coughs> this plan doesn't uh, this revolve around just one person, does it? No. No. Here's a couple other things I want to go over. A hospitality. Now, our hospitality is Carol Wright. And uh, I know we've had our discussion. We've had our discussions. But when it comes to the kitchen, when it comes to doing food, you see, I need, I need a leader. A leader, what they do is they lead other people. See, Carol is excellent at having a plan. And she's excellent at just seeing it. She needs a team of people around her that she can lead instead of her having to do it herself. We've got to be willing to say, God, I ain't doing it myself anymore. i got to get some people around me that I can lead to help me carry the vision. Because if you're doing it by yourself, you're not going to do much. If I'm a pastor and I'm just going to do it all myself, we're going to stay small. If I'm a pastor and I'm saying I'm going to delegate the vision to other people so they can start to lead around here, we will grow. We will be mighty in the Lord. Our video tech is Frank Normal. Man, I tell you what, Kathy was in here cleaning the night. She was in here mowing, she was moving all that stuff around and just vacuuming away. And I was like, man, I think you're burning up that vacuum cleaner. I just got that vacuum cleaner for $15 down at the thrift store. And I was like, that's what I got for $15 because it smells like it's getting ready to burn up. It did, man. I tell you, it was hot. Have you ever been around a church, a huge church or a big church? They didn't have no ushers. I'm just saying, you know, I, we need ushers. We need people that can come in here and help us with this. And I got somebody in my mind that I would like to lead that. But I need somebody, you know, you're just thinking about people that can just help people get in and out of their seats. Go and help them, you know, find seats, you know, and just be in the being in a part, you know, and helping the sheep get where they need to go. We need people that can usher. And ushers are behind the scenes. They just help keep order in the sanctuary. They just help order, you know, orderly flow. And people come up and they start falling out in the Spirit. Ushers are there to help catch them. And ushers are there to help put, you know, claws over the ladies' legs and stuff like that. We need people that are dedicated to keep the sanctuary tight. Because this right here ain't much right now. I mean, we've got 150 chairs or whatever. It's getting bigger. People are coming and we're going to have more than one service. We've got to have some ushers up in the house. Now, if you're called to be in the music ministry, you're saying, I ain't trying to be no usher. But somebody needs to come and start leading this right here. You know what? If I get somebody that would just try to help me lead this right here, man, we could have it up, running, and tight. Amen? Intercessory prayers, Madeline O'Connor. And here's another thing right here. This parking lot ministry. We need people out in the parking lot. We got a small parking lot. We're going to put another one over in the field. It's going to be a gravel parking lot. It's going to hold probably 150 cars. But we need somebody out there that can help direct people to go in the right direction. They will say, you go over here and park, and those people over there, you go over there and park. Follow me. We got one for you. You're handicapped. We got one right over here. You don't have to walk. Just go right in here. We need people out there that can walk people in and love on people and say, oh, it's great to see you. Come here and let me help those kids of yours. You see, people that come on your property usually in the first 10 minutes will make up their mind if they're going to stay or not. First 10 minutes. First 10 minutes when they come on your property. They ain't, the, they ain't me preaching a real good sermon. Although that's really nice. The net is cast whenever you come on the parking lot. And whenever they come in the door, or whoever meets them at the front door, all the people say, what, what's this job? It's everything. It's First Touch Ministries. What you're doing out on that parking lot. We've got to get that up and running. We've got to get that up and running. And people at the front door need to be on point. 
I don't care if you know them when they're coming in. Act like you don't. Say, oh, it's good to see you today. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And you know, put out your hands, shake some hands and stuff, and praise God for them coming in the door. You know, just we got to get that up tight. You know what I mean? Up and running and just thinking about it. I think Carol Gale is doing a great job. Yeah. I'm just letting you know, guys. I know you're saying you're talking like we're not where we're at right now. You're exactly right because God's got my vision somewhere else. I'm talking to you where my vision is going. I'm talking to you tonight about where we're going. I'm talking to you about where I see it. I see us needing all this happening. We need somebody out on the parking lot. We've got to have three or four people out there. It's just the way it is. I know what I'm talking about. We're going to need it in the name of Jesus. So we need people out there that are smiling and having a good time and, and not begrudging having to get here and, and wait on people at the door. When they come in, you're smiling. Hey, how are you? You know, and like you know, it's your long lost friend or something you ain't seen for 10 years. Oh, praise God, it's good to see you. I love how Carol does it. She's like, welcome home. Welcome home. Come on in the house. Welcome home. You know, we all have our gifts. I like that. We need to make them feel like they just came into the best thing in, in Rocky Mountain. You just found the best thing today in Rocky Mountain. And you're going to enter into the presence of the Lord. And we're glad you're here. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 Now, my wife, Teresa, I think she does a good job over there. She, uh, she really helps me. She's my helpmate. You know, I oversee all of it. But Teresa's with me as my helpmate, and she oversees this part right here. The women's ministry with Susan Sigmund. Susan Sigmund leads that, but my wife oversees it. She oversees the nursery. She oversees the children's church. Even though Sheila's back there and she teaches, my wife oversees that part. So whenever nobody's there to help her, as she oversees it, she steps in and takes responsibility to make sure somebody's there every time. If it has to be her, then it's her. Because that's her responsibility. And then whenever she's got helpers, she would delegate it. She will uh, get them all, you know, have a certain schedule in, and everybody's not too used up. Everybody's got a little bit. So my wife's back there, and she makes a schedule. And a lot of times on Sundays, she's got enough people. But on Wednesday nights... A lot of times she's not even in here. And our men's ministry right here is Dennis Sigmund. We're having that this Saturday. Praise the Lord. We're going to get up in there. We're going to have some breakfast. Uh, I'll chew on some uh, uh, something. I don't know what I'm going to chew on. If you're not on the Daniels Fest, y'all be up there eating bacon and eggs and sausage. And, and I'll have a twig over in the corner or something. <laughs> a toothpick. <laughs> Yeah, I'll take some apples and grapes over there. I was down at all. Uh, this is really cool, man. I was down at uh, IPHC yesterday. And we had this guy teaching a class. And this guy, he had, he had his arms were covered with tattoos. I mean, covered down to his... You know, everything about a pastor that I was ever taught, coming out of a holiness background, this guy was not. Come on. <laughs> Come on, guys. I mean, you know, he wears a hat. You know, I'm at the, he wears a hat up in the pulpit. <clears throat> and y'all are thinking, wow. Well, he told me yesterday, he's like, you know why I do that? He said, because the light shines off my ball spot. <laughs> he said, embarrassing me. <laughs> he's got these tattoos. When I first met him, I was walking in, I was like, and I smiled, and I was like, you know, praise the Lord, how are you? And I didn't know who he was. He got up and he talked. He says, I went from 35 people in my church. We got 1,000, 5,000, over 1,000 people in there now. Cool. And he's like, you know, and I was like, all oh, those tattoos down your arm and everything. He said, people getting saved and ministered to and, and uh, just being powerful in the Lord. And, and I was like, everything they told me in Bible college doesn't apply to this man right here. <coughs> right here. It's, it's just that powerful. Don't you judge somebody because they got a tattoo on their arm. Don't you judge somebody because you're looking at the package. You don't even see the dynamic, beautiful thing that God's doing on the inside of them. Oh man, I was like, oh Jesus, help me, Father God. Pick up something this man is saying. And what he said to me is what I heard from the Lord. You don't have to stay where you're at. Get ready. 
Get ready and move out and believe God for more. I did not come over here to do just a little bit. I came over here to make a mess in the Lord. I'm talking about a mess for the devil. I mean, I'm coming over here. I ain't, the Lord didn't come to take sides. He came to take over in the name of Jesus. He don't come to make peace. Sometimes He comes to make war. He comes and He makes a mess out of things. He turns it upside down. He knows what He's doing. Amen. Oh, man, God knows what He's doing. Yes, He does. Oh, man, come on now. I promise you this. If you don't like it now, you're definitely not going to like it when it gets bigger. I'm just letting you know. If you don't like it now, then you definitely won't like it then. But if you like it now, and you feel like you're called to be here, then God can elevate you and, and graduate people that are willing to serve. Yeah. If you are willing to serve from God, then you can be you can be graduated. If you say I'm called to the ministry, you can graduate right up into the ministry. Then one day be sent out and have your own church over there somewhere. You can do that. We are going to be a place where people are sent out to start their own churches, but they're going to have to serve here first. That's just all there is to it. Y'all looking at me like cows looking at a new gate. <coughs> Y'all chewing like that good bastard. <laughs> thing of it is, man, if somebody's up in here called to the ministry, they're kicking right inside them right now. Going, oh, oh Jesus, help me, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus, I've been waiting on that to happen, Father God. I need a way. Show me the way where there seems to be no way. Show me, Lord God, the path you want me to walk, Lord. Oh, I want to be used of you, Lord God. I want to have a call, Lord. I want to fulfill the call, Lord. And the Lord's opening the way. He said, get involved here because this place is coming up. This place is moving. This I'm going to show my glory off. My glory cloud is going to end up in this place. And it's going to come down. And people are going to be all slain in the Spirit all around. See, God's moving and He's going to show up for us. Amen. He's showing up for us already. Amen. Oh, man, God is good, isn't He? Amen. So I'm going to have some sign-up sheets. We're going to be out, in the, out here in the foyer. And I want people to start signing up to help my wife over there. I really do. Because I cried out to God. And I had a beautiful time the other night. On Saturday night, Matt, you, just, you and your friends just brought me in. And Jesus showed up. I mean, I was, people asked me why you cried so much. I was like, I was in the presence of the Lord. You know, I was like, I was in the presence of the Lord. And I remember being in His presence, you know, and I, and I believe this, as you're in His presence and you're praising Him, and you sense the power and the presence of the Lord, I whisper my prayer. And I was like, Lord, bring revival to us. And I went home and my wife got in my ear. And I was like, oh, Lord, we need help. We need help, Lord. Bring them, Lord God. Help us to have a vision for the future. Guys, have a vision with your pastor. I'm letting you know, if you, have a, if you will buy into this for a year with me, for the next coming year, we are going to see this place pop. I ain't saying five years down the road. I'm saying in the next year, we will see these walls. That got. These gonna, you're going to need room. You're going to need more room. And then we're going to have to move on to it. We're just going to have to take the next step. But our next step right now is growing. And I'm letting you know right now, tonight, in the name of Jesus, that they're coming. I'm letting you know tonight, people are going to come, man, they know how to sing. I'm letting you know they're coming. There's people coming, and your little boys will be able to have a lot of their playmates over in there. They're coming in the name of Jesus. I'm letting you know tonight, I'm looking you in the face, they're coming. And there ain't not, nobody can do about it. They are coming. They are coming in from the north, the south, the east, and the west. They're coming in. I see them coming in. They're coming in dirty. They're coming in clean. They're coming in with all kinds of different tattoos and all kinds of stuff. They're coming in. I'm letting you know tonight they are coming in. If you're not comfortable now, you won't be comfortable then. But I'm telling you, again, in the name of Jesus, the anointing of God is in this place. And we usher in the anointing of God. They're coming in in the name of Jesus. 
So tonight, I just want you to stand. And I want to give you a, that has faith tonight. I want you to just grab a hold of a few chairs on your aisle and just go over and start praying on them. In the name of Jesus, Father God, I'm praying over these chairs that you will fill up.